Zimbabwe. I think this is the longest time I've stayed in one country. And you know why? Because the country got a lot to offer. When I came to Bulawayo, a lot of people were telling me that you cannot go to Bulawayo without going to Makokoba. Makokoba, yes. Makokoba. Yes. So we are here in Makokoba, and like you always know, I don't go places just to eat, have fun, and go. I need to educate myself because I want to be a working book in future. A working book who did not do research in books, but actually learn from people like him. The first thing I want to know is why the word Makokoba. that was given to the native commissioner of the African township. So Makokoba was the first African settlement in the early stages of the development of the city, while it's the, 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 the elite whites were living the other side of town to the eastern suburbs. So um, now this guy, Mr. Fallon, was, his name was Mr. Fallon, he was a tall old man uh, who was responsible for checking out the activities of the native Africans in this township so he would come to inspect and because he was old and he was uh, walking with a, with, a, with, with, with a can he would go like caw, 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 caw with a can and whenever they heard that sound everybody would, 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 would get, get into order Makokova is coming Makokova is coming also Makokova in, in Sindebele Ugukokova is to is to bend like this. So he's an old man who's bending like this. Ko, ko, ko. So this is the sound they were always on the watch lookout for. When they hear it, they know, guys, he's coming, everybody in his place. If you were being mischievous, please let's get to order. How mischievous? So the locals were supposed to stay each in his room. What do you mean? Okay. So if you are an African living and working in Bulawayo, you are not supposed to stay with your family. You leave your family back in the rural areas. You only go see them when you are off duty. So when you are living here, you are also not allowed to congregate with friends, even over a beer or tea. So um, the reason was, if you live with a family, your family always respect you as uh, your fa their father, and you always feel like you're a big man. Uh, and that's a problem in the work environment. You will be insubordinate because you feel big. So they wanted you to reduce you to feel like you're a boy. And they would actually call you boy. Don't talk to me like that, boy. Um, and in Zimbabwe, in the rural areas, if uh, you work for me, uh, people will say, uh, what day is Phineas boy? It's taken from that. Wow. You see, if you are working for me, you are my boy. So these guys were living like that. And whenever they wanted to congregate, uh, over a drink maybe during the weekend, their plan was to put a red cloth by the gate so that when Mr. Makokova comes oh, to check, he sees the cloth and he thinks, oh, there is a funeral there. Well, this was the only reason they would be given permission to gather. So anytime they gather, which means that what? There's a funeral, even though there was not. Even though there was not. But it, why are the it rooms... It was a trick. Why are the rooms having numbers? Yes, because this, this, this was your address. 1611 would be your address. If, if someone wants to, to come from the rural areas, you would tell them, I live at room number 1611. Not house number, but room number. This was their own land? Yes. But they ended up being squatters, living in squalid conditions. Who, who, who started this? It is the settler government. So that's like during apartheid or during colonization? During the colonization, yes. It was the, the government that was led by Leander Star Jemerson. Wow, that's, I feel like Bulawayo got a lot of bitter history that a lot of people need to know. It does, it does. How big is the rooms? Um, not very big, because you, it would be just your, your, your living space, your sleeping place, Everything else should be in your rural home. You, you, you are not supposed to feel very comfortable. And if the room is big, you might feel mischievous. To bring um, friends, you are not supposed, if you are a male, you are not supposed to found, be found with a woman in the house. This city, uh, I think was in 1972, if I'm not mistaken. My father used to share with other uh, family members 
in that setting. Mm. Then, my mother, my father was a married uh, person at that time, mm. father. Mm. We, he had three mothers, right? <clears throat> he isolated himself there, then this was the bedroom. At that time, there was no this door. This outdoor was, uh, was not there. Then, after 19, uh, before 1980, uh, he ordered this house as his, while still this bedroom was not there. Then after, uh, after independence, uh, that's where they constructed this other um, bedroom. room, which was the main bedroom. This was constructed by? By the state council. Oh. Yes. But in after 1980. After, after 1980, yes. So which means in its original form, it was just this? We, it, it was uh, a sitting room and, uh, and this, this kitchen, kitchen, which was a, 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 a bedroom during that time. Oh, that time That's was... why you can see even the roof they were using um, these uh, uh, stoves, thermal mm. stoves. There were no lights, all these things were put after 1980. We had a, a public toilet, a, a public, um, that was a public toilet and a, a bathing area for everyone. For, for everyone. Of which it was tough for you to go for bathing without a friend holding a, a, a soap was the more you do this you wash your, your head putting the soap on the face you put your your, 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 your your soap there by the time you finish washing your your, 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 your head you find that the, the soap will, it's gone it's gone someone is snitched that, that, yes that that was the game. So somebody has to be there to hold it. Yes. You wash your head first, then after that, you'll be able to see. See. Oh, then I come for my soap. Yeah. So soap so, was very precious. Yeah. So soap was very precious at, at that time. This way, the, the containers to wash the clothes. This. How long Where? has this been existence in? Ah, it's like long back. It's long back. Yeah, like it's long the... back because there were no toilets at that time. Uh -huh. There was uh, public toilets, mm -hmm. uh, public uh, washing. Uh, where there was, there was a main pipe where we were standing there trying to to view this uh, container. You see, mm -hmm. so there was a main pipe there, mm -hmm. whereby people we taking water from the tap, coming to the bath, coming for washing. Okay. That so was, was, was for washing? Yes. Of clothes? Yes. So there was a communal tap? Yes, there was a communal tap. Uh, the, 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 those uh, uh, locals and the taps were demarcated according to streets. Because this, is, uh, this, this wasn't the only locals and uh, uh, tap or bath place. So with time, the Africans also lobbied for their rights uh, within council and they were later they were given some representation. This is when uh, a bit more expanded houses were built for them and the community halls were, were built for them. Some social activities like soccer began right here in Makokova. Uh, boxing, there was a lot of boxing here and also some jazz coming, coming up now. Life was becoming better for the, for the locals. The oldest soccer uh, team in, in, in Zimbabwe, Highlanders football, football Club, was started right here in, in, in Makokora. Are these houses in its original form? Yes. Or it has been... They are in their original form. Original form. Uh, during my old days hmm. here in Makokora, I came in here. In 1953, you're not yet born. No. Uh, I did my 
education here. It was built because of the, uh, it used to be, Bulawayo, it used to be hub of the industry. Okay. So people, when they get their jobs in the industrial side, you see now, those wise, they used to phone to the city council. Hey, I've got a worker here. Yeah. He has got no place what? To stay. stay. Then you're given what? You're given a house. In Makokoba. In Makokoba. Just one room for one person? No, no, no. Uh, the room, uh, it was a, a big room, but it used to stay three people or three families. Women were not allowed. Women were, were not allowed. Even kids were not allowed. But during those days, let's just say if I am married, my wife used to come during what? During the night at 10 o'clock. During what? During the night. He sneaks in. Then early in the morning, six o'clock, you see, that woman will go out to what? Uh, to you know near the river there. There used to be a, a boat park. So all the women, when they, uh, 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 those who are married, you see now, they used to go and stay what? At the park. The park. Wait for their husbands. Waiting for the husband. But those days, uh, there used to be an inspection. Police will come in and check whether uh, men are. <laughs> there, are no, <laughs> there are no women yeah. inside. Mm. If they catch you, they will detain the woman. They will detain the woman, not the man. Uh, they will detain the woman just because the women are not allowed to sleep in here. Yeah. That's my coco. This market was built long, long time before I was born. This market. And it's the first market? The first market for the blacks. So it, it used to house uh, uh, all, all the people. You see now, you could see clothes here. Second hand clothes you sold here. Fruits and vegetables sold here. By who? Men? Okay. During those, uh, 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 those days, we had farmers outside Bulawayo. Okay. They used to uh, 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 bring their what? Uh, 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 their maize, uh, rapo, uh, ground nuts, uh, round nuts to come and sell them here. To come and sell them here. Will you say life? in Makoko was terrible? Well, it was terrible. How? It, was, it was terrible. You see, during those days, it was terrible. It was terrible. These are changes. That are happening? Yeah, from 1980. Ah! These are what? Changes. Are uh, changes. After independence? After independence. So before independence, it was just a single room. A single room. Three people living in there. Yeah, yes, or, or even four. Even now, they are... <laughs> We still got, you know, some of the families who, which are staying like that. Even now, three, three. Just hoping that things so, will change. During those days, let's say uh, 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 you are married, you have got your wife, isn't that? Okay, you want to have a nice time with what? Your wife. With your wife. You see now, the other one, uh, uh, he has got a family. He wants to have a nice time with what? With his wife. Think of it. What will happen? It's now becoming a, it's a, a competition. If, if you start. <laughs> 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 said all those things yep i know the picture of the past may look so gloomy but today is a different setting now it's a different scenario this is makokoa it's busy it's a busy busy a market area you see behind me here there's a lot going on mm. the women are cooking there's a lot of uh, ways selling in there cultural stuff but it's a place where upon if you look you 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 you, you, you get fond memories of um the, 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 the story of the emancipation of the black people from the, from the close of um, uh, colonization. So it's a place uh, that, that you, 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 you also get inspiration from. 
to say, okay, as hard as it may get, uh, where there's determination, you, you, you really get away. Mm. And today, um, it's a cultural hub. We look at it that way, uh, rather than a place of uh, sadness or suffering. Do you know how many people are living here right now? Um, I don't have the exact number, yeah. but uh, it's one of the, the densely populated areas because uh, within these houses that are so closely limited, you find so many people living in there. Mm. Yes. I really want to go in there to see what's happening in there right now. It's not possible for you to take me around. Okay, I think a better idea is uh, for me to hand over to Claudia. She will do better at that. But what I can promise you, today Makokoba is the home of creativity in the whole city of Blawayo. And you are going to see that. Hi everyone, welcome to Makokoba, one of the oldest suburbs in Bulawa, Zimbabwe. We're so excited to be showing my brother from Ghana. My brother from oh. Ghana! <laughs> I, I really want to see her, but I've seen food. I don't want to move. Are you getting me some food? Yes, definitely. As you can see, there's a lot happening. People cooking. But, uh, but, but why is like everyone is selling at the same place? Yes, that's entrepreneurship for you. Wow, there's no competition. Exactly. Whose food is the best in here? Mm. Mama, 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 your food is the best? Uh, beef. Beef. This is mkwaba. Plates. Just give me plates. Faster. So, mkwaba is uh, dried meat. Dried meat, yeah. So it's salted and it's dried. You see, I, I have a lot of places to go. Mm -hmm. So you just give me plates and give me all steel. And yeah. Or still this one, this one. I'm from Ghana. You, thank you, Mama. Thank you. Will you eat my food? Yeah, definitely. Hey, Why not? Just say no now. <laughs> no. Ah. I would never say no to food. <laughs> I love food. <laughs> the most popular dish in Zimbabwe, Sada. Uh, in beta, like green vegetables, kind of in Rio, in Shona, and then this is beef. A lot of people would mix and cook like in one. So have a bite. Mama, you you got the best food in Zimbabwe. Okay. Ah, the whole of Zimbabwe. <laughs> Whoa, no, it's good. Have you tried this mkwaba? Uh, what am I eating? Mkwapa, oblawayo. Is it dry meat? Mm, what meat is that? It can be beef, goat, meat. But I think this one is beef. Mama? Nyame no. nkwomole mkwapa. Wow. Oh, it's actually, wow. It's, it's actually what? game meat. It's game, game meat. meat. Game meat? <laughs> yeah. Bush meat? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Kuru? Kuru? Eh, eh, ni pala pala yi. Pala pala yi. antelope. Antelope! Ah, I've eaten antelope in Zimbabwe. Thank you, I love that. Let's make some jokes. Yeah? Nice. With your daddy. You have My jokes? son is visiting this country. Mm -hmm. There is a world called place you nice. to come here in Zimbabwe. Mm. Please don't forget this. Where you go, let these people shoot the camera mm -hmm. and give your best friends there where you are going. Mm. Don't forget this, my son. I will never I forget. Love I love you too. With love and confidence of myself. I'm not a fool to love you. Do the same when I visit you in Canada. But I know. I'm old. I oh. don't think that I'll go there you, you, No, you'll come. Visit us all the time here. You sound like Rollins. You sound like You know, I have so many friends here. Yeah? Mama, how are you? I'm all right. You all right? Yeah, you have a gift for me? Ah, Mama, don't go, don't go. Ah, give me a, me, I will give you a gift. Give me money. Give me money. I, I'll give you guys gifts before I leave here. Don't worry. Give me money. Everyone wants my bed. So, one more. <laughs> Give me one more. Mama, so, so this is a gift from Ghana. Okay. And this is a gift from Ghana. Thank you. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> So this market is called Makokova Market. Okay. So the interesting uh, point or fact, this market was created from traders coming from Kenya. Yeah, so there are two markets basically in Blair that were created from traders from Kenya. There's this one, then there's one called the Bulawayo Curious Market. Okay. Yeah, so those, remember Bulawayo was the stop of a point. 
for traders, for laborers, sorry, coming from West Central and East Africa going to Joburg. Wow. The Vid Waters Rat, what we call wow. the city of Joburg now. Okay. But when they got here, sort of like there was a coincidence, the economic boom that was occurring here in Bulawayo, which started in 1945. So you got these markets that were created. As you see now, initially it was a market to sell clothes, but now there are different types of, uh, you can see the tires, you can see the medicinal herbs, which are very important in this market, because you find it's a a link between the urban and the rural. Mm. You've got rural herbalists coming mm. with the medicine here, mm. and you've got people in the urban areas mm. coming to buy that medicine. Wow. Yeah. So it's sort of like a, a, a melting pot of different cultures. There's also engineering. There's so many, the economic, it's just an ecosystem that's very important here in the city of Fulawa. I want to ask, which tribe of Kenya love business? Probably, <laughs> is it a law or kikuis? But I think but I, I think it's the kikui that came. Definitely, it's gonna be the kikui. The kikui that came. Uh, that came the kikui is yeah. they know how to handle money. That's <laughs> it. They say stay out from kikui woman. <laughs> Don't beat me. Oh. <laughs> They make different things that they sell to people. As you can see, there's a lot of recycling of tires, which they make into doormats, things that people will then use after. I now understand why my initial tour guide told me that this is a place of creativity. Because yeah, yeah. this is a tie, and they've turned into. Is it a basket? No, it's not. Is it a basket? It's Hi. A basket. Is it what? It's a feeding trough. They use it in Feeding farming. trophy. So they'll put something so that the cows and the goats can eat from this thing. Wow. Yes. That's creativity. Mm -hmm. How much is it? No, that's what I want to greet, you know. Sao sa, 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 sa Banani. Hello. How are you doing? How are you doing, man? How are you? Hey, man. Everything cool. Hi. You're yeah, hungry, I can see that food over women, don't worry. <laughs> uh, how much do you sell this though? Ten dollars. Ten dollars per one. Wow, I, I love the creativity in here. Well, we have this in Ghana. Yes, this is for, for, for hunting beds. For hunting of beds. Mm -hmm. And hunting my camera guy right now. There's a stone. You want to break your camera? Ah, come on, I will kill this guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You see, the more you travel in Africa, the more you realize that we are just the same people, you know? Yes. So here they are selling chickens, uh, guinea fowl. Mm. In Debele, we call this ingalikoni. Oh. So this is the, the, the tasty meat. This is what the women were eating from can then buy and then make into a meal. Hmm. Yeah. This is actually one of the best meals in the whole world. Yeah. And I saw it in the national park and I wanted to catch it so badly. Why did you want to catch it? No, guinea fowl tastes better than chicken. Yeah, it does. Definitely. It tastes better than chicken. It tastes, it tastes gamey. But, but, but they said it's um, and re conserved. National parks say cannot be touched. Yes, it's still not touched. Ha! I follow you, brother. Ah! On social media. Wow! Yeah. Even here? Yeah, all the way from UK. Wow! And sister. Oh, amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. It's good to see you. But I want you to send a message. You live in the UK now? Yeah, I live in the UK. You're right. back here or you are still going back? Yeah, I'm still going back. How, what message do you have for Africans? Africans. You know, Africans all over the world must be proud of where they come from. Hmm. Now, um as we go you know as you are given the opportunity to go abroad mm. grasp the knowledge as much as possible and use that knowledge to come and utilize because one of the most problems in in africa is um mismanagement of resources mm. so we learn accountability and responsibility in the first world countries so if you learn the aspect of accountability and responsibility you come and implement them in your own respective countries. So we have plenty of resources. We are millionaire in resources, but in sheer poverty, in management of what? Of resources. I love your message. So as we go out there, mm. we must learn to come up with the ideas and to duplicate them. 
to our own local industry in terms of medicine, mm. in terms of uh, promoting our own promoting our own continent as well. You see. Mm. The, we have got the wealthy, but we do we are somehow I, I don't want to say abused because there's a brain drain. Brain drain, so we are taking educated staff, they are what immigrating to what to, to the the developed West. countries to look after already developed countries. And make more money for them. And rest. make more money. Why at least we're thinking that we're earning a lot of money, but no man, we're not earning a lot of money. A lot of money is in here, underground. A lot of money is here when we are when we are maximizing the the, the resources that we have. Mm. So the moment we come together collectively with our own individual work skills, so we begin to maximize our output. What do they use this one for? So this is a bell that they put on the the kettle. The kettle? Yes, yeah, so that they can hear them from afar. Like, goodness. Isn't, isn't it like that? It's loud. <laughs> Jeez. I'm sorry, man. It's loud. Nice to meet you, bro. Yep. So come and support these people. They yep. make handmade quality, high quality products that will last for a long time and has got great memories and great history. So it's such a beautiful thing to do. Have you noticed something? What? Let me show you. All of these things mm -hmm. can be found in South Africa. Yes, yes. Are you guys the same people? Kind of. Isn't you remember I told you that our ancestors migrated from South Africa to Zimbabwe. Oh. So we carried some of the culture and some of the items. You carried along? We remake because of stories that were told. Then which means that Zimbabweans and South Africans need to come together and stop fighting each other. Are we fighting? You're fighting, you don't know? This is how the whole market it. I'm just so feeling like I'm in Ghana because everything that I, is here, you can actually see 90% of them in Ghana. Mm. You see, like, this atmosphere is so welcoming. And exactly. And yeah, that's one, th that's what, one thing that I feel. I, I, I really feel at home. Wow. Bro, let's go. Yeah.